Small business owner, remote worker, entrepreneur. Have you heard of Coin Coworking? It's Huntsville's latest hidden gem inspiring an affordable community workspace. Situated in the beautifully renovated Lincoln Mill campus, just minutes from downtown, Coin is the ultimate co-working space in Huntsville, offering creative yet professional workspace, an unmatched networking community, and affordable membership pricing. Your business will have zero problems adding a little coin to your bottom line. Consider Coin your all-inclusive resort for professional workspace. You simply pay an affordable monthly membership and you unlock amazing amenities, including professional, modern, and complete workspace, team meeting spaces, air printers, copiers, and scanners, Google Fiber Wi-Fi, locally sourced drip coffee, and so much more. From affordable flex space memberships to private office options and everything in between, Coin Coworking has exactly what you need to be excited about work again. Take care of your office space headaches and you can focus on achieving your career goals. Declare your independence from your current drab and boring office setup today and schedule your tour of Coin Coworking. Learn more about Coin and schedule your tour today at coincoworking.com and all this information will be in the episode notes. Welcome back to another episode of Beyond Rockets. Today I sit down to talk with the founder of Mommy Love Foundation, whose mission is to help empower mothers to navigate life's tough circumstances by assisting them in the basic needs, encouraging self-care, and providing the tools to help new moms and moms-to-be thrive. First off, thank you for taking the time to sit down and talking with me today. Would you like to introduce yourself and we'll get started there? Will do. Good morning. My name is Leslie Kaysen. Um, I live in Huntsville, Alabama, and I am the founder and CEO of the Mommy Love Foundation. Yeah. Well, thanks. Thank you so, thank you so much for being here. I'm excited to have you on and talk a little bit about the foundation. Glad to be here. Um, so talk. let's kind of backtrack a little bit of your sort of your background, kind of what what you were doing. Are, are you originally from Huntsville? Sort of what did you study in school? What is your background in? Okay. So I grew up in Huntsville, Alabama. Um, I went to Oakwood University for computer information systems. Okay. I went to the Florida Institute of Technology for um, master's in logistics. I do work for the DOD and I do logistics for them. Okay. Um, and so as I'm working the, you know, the job that actually pays me, yeah. I'm actually, <laughs> you know, um, also working my own yeah. nonprofit. So that's can be a challenge at times, <laughs> yeah. but we're making it work. Did you ever, I mean, I know it's, uh, I mean, I've grown up in Huntsville my entire life, haven't left, went to school here myself too. Mm-hmm. Did you ever, like, did you ever leave Huntsville? Did you ever want to leave Huntsville? And then kind of did, did job, did work kind of bring you back here? So yes, I'm one of those. I like to, I like to try. Okay. Right. So I like to go all over the place. And the, the good thing is I am married to a Marine. <laughs> so, you know, he gets the PCS here and there. So the last station we were uh, stationed at was in, Quantico, Virginia. Right. So we stayed up there for four years and then we came back in 2019 and then COVID and such things hit. So, and then haven't left and you plan on on staying here. Yes. We we are now officially retired and we are stationed (laughs) here and we are good to go. We're not perfect. Perfect. So I, so I know the mommy love foundation kind of sparked, um, really out of COVID. I mean, out of of the need you saw in the community, Mm -hmm. did you have any prior experiences, either helping out with nonprofits, being a part of a nonprofit, or is that sort of an all new territory when you started getting into mommy love? All new territory, (laughs) all of it, all of it. So what happened was, um, while I was in Virginia, I had this, this kind of pull in my heart, like, Hey, I wanted, I want to help the community. I just didn't know how I just, I just knew I wanted to. Um, and I remember God literally telling me, I got you, you just won't do it here. You'll do it someplace else. So when I got back to Huntsville, um, I had a brand new, like three, four month old (laughs) (laughs) and, um, a three year old and then COVID hit. Right. And so once COVID hit, um, I myself felt like I was going crazy because I have this, this, this at the time, one year old and four year old, I'm doing my work. My husband's not able to be here because he is stationed somewhere else. So I had all these things going on. Um, and financially we have the means to do that. Right. Mm -hmm. But as you, sat back and listened in the news or talked to your different friends, you saw that people needed help and it didn't matter if you were making 25,000 or 125,000 people just needed help. And so I, I was able to see that and kind of keen into that. I am a person who likes to help people. I like to make sure um, that people are okay. I tell my husband all the time, I'm like, I want to make sure you're okay. Are you okay? (laughs) Are you good? So I, I am that type of person. So I just like to make sure that everything and everybody is okay. And if I can help you in that, in some type of way, right? Yeah. I'm, I'm going to help. Um, and of course, being a mom myself and knowing that people need um, basic items, but they also need um, emotional support, yeah. right? Because it's it's tough out here. Yeah. Living in this, and like, in this world. I mean, I, I, so like, 
I mean, when you come back from, you know, you grew up here, you've seen Huntsville grow over the years. Yes. You leave and you come back. Did you envision or did you think that there was something like this already in Huntsville? And were you shocked to find there really wasn't? Or did you, or like, what was going through your head at that time? So I, so to backtrack a little bit. So, you know, everyone talks about having a purpose and, and trying to find what that purpose was. So I went to a seminar and it was called the bloom. It was called bloom. Okay. Um, so within that seminar, it kind of, it kind of nailed down to help you find your purpose and, and what that meant. And so at the end of the the conference, at, we did a whole bunch of writing and <laughs> talking and all this, all the, all these great things. But at the end of the conference, I was just like, okay. Cause she talks about, you know, um, finding the needs that are around you and your talents and what you can do to kind of combine those things together and, and make your purpose mm-hmm. flourish. So I kind of took the idea of, Hey, you know, I know there is a need for moms yeah. in the community um, to have the basic needs and emotional support. So let me see what I can do to do that. And I wasn't at the time trying to, f- you know, look to find money off of it. It's just, once again, my little giving yeah. heart, <laughs> 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 what can I do to give people um, the things that they desire, yeah. the things that they need. And so that's how it, how it kind of came kind of about. sparked about. Yeah. yeah. I mean, like there, there's one, there's one thing of like having the idea to start something and there's the next thing of actually like making this official. Mm-hmm. Where did you, did you seek guidance? Did you seek people's support? Did you like, did, were you Googling? Were you researching? How did you go about going from, Hey, there's this need. I can fill this need. Now let me form mommy love foundation. Okay. So Within that same conference, um, there was <laughs> there were contacts within the conference. So the leader of the conference, um, she she pointed me out to someone that literally had just started that just started their foundation a couple of years earlier. Perfect, right? <laughs> so she, her name is Margaret. She came to me and we sat down. Mind you, she's in Memphis. I'm here. Yeah, right. So when I say sat down, I'm talking about sat down over Zoom. <laughs> okay. So we sat down over Zoom and she literally walked. I mean, we we did some research in the area and so on and so forth. But she literally walked me through. This is the website you go to. These are the fees that you pay. Wow. So on and so forth. You know, for your state. Yeah. Um. And this is, these are the different organizations you need to be a part of within your state, so on and so forth. So I was fortunate, I had fortunate enough to have someone just literally hold my hand. Here we go. Step one, step <laughs> here's, two, step here's three. Here's the blueprint. Step four. Correct. Yeah. Just go through this. And by the end, you're going to get to here. You're going to get to here. It's not going to get easier though. No. <laughs> it just and gets she harder. Did, and she did warn me of that. So, <laughs> <laughs> but, but to simply sit down and go on the website and hit, okay, yeah, yeah submitting my name, um, to see if anybody else, you know, within the state had it and they come back, you're like, no, it's your name. That kind of <laughs> gave me all the, the butterflies in the world. I'm like, oh my gosh, this I is have mine. A, right. I have a nonprofit. I'm like, oh my gosh. And then the panic sets in like, what do I do from now, here? What's next? Yeah. So, I mean, was the name always going to be mommy love or did you have other names kind of going through your mind at that point? I, I had other names and honestly, I don't, I can't even remember what okay. they are right now. And it just kind of like, as it you, just, as you search mommy love and it was available, it was like, well, this is yes, it. The, the, yeah, that was, that was my confirmation. Like, okay, this is it. No one has it. And we're going to stick with this. And yeah. it's, you know, we added the found. So it was just mommy love. And then we added the foundation at the end <clears throat> later on, but. The mommy, to me, it encompassed everything that the organization that I wanted to, to stand for, yeah, you know, hundred percent. Yeah. Loving on your kids, but also loving on the mom because without the kids there has to be. Yeah. And, and <laughs> I, I think, you know, there's so many, you know, there's, there's, especially in Huntsville, I mean, there's more and more companies and organizations coming to Huntsville right. and with a name like mommy love, it really like without even knowing really what it is, you can just by the name, be like, Oh, Hey, I bet it says something along the lines of helping mothers out. Oh, well, it, it does. Mm-hmm. And like it, it, so it, it, it helps you on that end. So you, you get all the paperwork signed, you get all the, all the boxes checked, all the, all this, everything that you need to do to actually officially have the nonprofit. What yep. was the first sort of event you went to? What was the first way you got out there in the community to got yourself known as being this as new nonprofit. <laughs> so I ended up doing a um, donation drive. Okay. And so we did a few of those. I did one at um, Frito-Lay in Tennessee. I did another one at Ardent um, Preschool and Daycare here off of Redstone. And then I did another one. There was another one. There were several. That first year, I was just like, let's do as, it. As, as well, many, maybe not the first year. 2020, no. 2021 is when it really okay. started. So in 2020, though, but I mean, like you said, you started it in the midst of COVID. Mm-hmm. Like, what did that first eight, nine months look like? Because it was probably like... Okay. okay. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So, I mean. so, yeah, that was a lot of work. <laughs> the first eight, nine months were a lot of work because, I mean, yes, you have all your paperwork done and so on and so forth, but you still... And at that, at that time, I had a I had a board because you have to have a board to sign okay. up, right? Yeah. So, uh, but 
having those meetings with the board, I didn't, I didn't even know where to begin and where to start. Yeah. So I hired myself a professional coach. There you go. Um, his name is Brian and he is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> he literally walked me once again, walked me through. And I told him, I said, I don't know where to go. Yeah. I have a whole bunch of ideas in my head, but I need you to reel me in and say, okay, no, stop. <laughs> step one, step two, step three, step four. And that's exactly what he did. 100%. So those first um, seven to nine months was a whole bunch of game planning, getting everything um, on the ground level and, mm-hmm. and just kind of tying everything together. Hey, this is what needs to happen. This is your strategic plan. These are the dues that you need your board members to. Wow. Like we literally just walked through yeah. through the process. And then we talked about, hey, let's let's see how we can get the donations. So he suggested uh, donation drives. And okay. from there, I, I do donations drives two to three times a year. And it's usually toward the end of the year. Okay. Uh, while the beginning part of the year is more giving out and, you know, giving the the products out and mm-hmm. seeing, you know, kind of seeing who we can help and so on and so forth. Yeah. So, I mean, I guess, like I said, 2021 came around and you were just full swing into going to these donation drives. Right. And that pretty much kind of sets you through. So as, as far as 2021, I mean, that, that was really your first full year mm-hmm. in the business, kind of in the community. Did you, what was the response you saw from the community at that time? So the response was good. I know at first people were kind of curious, like, who are you? Where did you come from? <laughs> yeah. I've never seen you. No, sorry guys. I've been away from you. Um, so it was, it was good mingling with the different orders, the different donor, or, not donor, but sponsor organizations, yeah. right. That, that would help. So that's, that's another thing I love working in the community, helping in the community, networking within the community. So, you know, now that you, now that I have these different sponsor organizations that want to help, mm-hmm. you know, I keep in touch with them. So whenever I want to do another drive, they're like, sure, come, <laughs> no problem. See you in a few weeks. So, you know, it's, it's, it's great. It's yeah. been, it's been awesome. D- do you think it was, was it tough for you as like, I mean, you grew up here, you went to school here, you, you've, you've been gone. Now you're back. Was it mm-hmm. tough to kind of get back into the community and kind of get connections as Huntsville's grown so quickly? Or did you find it kind of easy once you kind of started getting going? It's kind of easy okay. for, for me. It yeah. was kind of easy um, because once again, I grew up here. So if I don't know somebody, somebody else knows 100%. somebody. Right. And so the networking was, eh, I'm kind of, I'm, ha- I'm halfway decent. At it. <laughs> so <laughs> the networking was, um, was a little easy for me. Yeah. Um, and then once, once again, I have a thousand ten ideas in my head and I can never settle on one. <laughs> hence why I can't talk to Brian. Um, but then he would give me suggestions. Well, Hey, talk to this person, see if this person knows like the CEO or the president of this company and yeah. you know, so on and so forth. So, I, I think as Huntsville, I mean, as Huntsville's continuing to grow so quickly, mm-hmm. there's still, it's so easy. I mean, I find it all the time for me when I'm out and about that I I'll see someone I know. Or I'll see someone that I know that I'll talk to them about someone else that I'm wanting to know and they'll know them. Yes. And even though it's growing so quickly, it still feels like that small it hometown. It still feels like that uh, And I, I hope I hope it stays that way because, I mean, I, I love it. But I also, I don't know if it will. And I, uh, it, it, it'll be a tough one. It'll be a tough one. So so you get into, so so 2021 is your first full year. Mm-hmm. 2022, you start getting into sort of that rhythm, I, I would mm-hmm. assume. Correct. Of figuring out kind of what the community is looking for, different sponsorships, d- different events to go to. Mm-hmm. How has 2021? 23 gone so far i guess halfway into this year as we record on june the 15th <laughs> yes um so we're getting busier okay right so we'll, we get more requests for help you know if you if you go to our website www.mommylovefoundation.org there is a um, survey that you take once you take the survey of course i get the results and then we go through and we help you know the individual as needed um, so 2023 is more of verbally getting our name out there, myself 100%. coming onto podcast <laughs> or going on. Um, I was I had an interview with WZYP with Mojo okay. earlier within the year. Um, so it's it's more people hearing my voice, yeah. you know, or a representative from 100%. you know Mommy Love and hearing what we do and putting a face and a voice to um, the Mommy Love Foundation. Also going to different events within the community, setting up a booth. Yeah. Say, hey, this is who we are. This is what we do. And you may not need our help this time, mm-hmm. but you may know somebody that Elsa does. Yeah. So take a flyer, take a postcard, pass it on to somebody, you know, that you that, you know, may need some help. So it's just it's kind of getting our faces back out there. Yeah. Into the community so people can actually see who we are and just not just, you know, some random somebody online. Yeah. <laughs> so um, you mentioned, trying to get your number. Yeah. Trying to get you, your you mentioned it a little bit earlier, though. You said, like, you know, balancing kind of your DOD work, the mm-hmm. jobs and balancing mommy love. Now that you're two years sort of kind of really into the swing of things, really, uh, how has that how have you continued to figure out ways to balance the two? Because I would presume it's probably pretty difficult. It is. However, <laughs> this is where volunteers come in. So I have I have a few volunteers. Like so whenever I get um 
notification that, hey, this person needs help. This person needs a package delivered to them or they can come pick up the package. Um, they usually they'll come. They'll meet me. We'll put packages together and, you know, we'll go. We'll either deliver them or usually I have a pickup spot where people can just come and pick up the package. Perfect. But yeah, so I, the volunteers, the volunteers are what <laughs> help. I have board members too, but a lot of them are not, you know, in town per mm-hmm. se, but they're the ones that are here. Yeah. They're busy also. <laughs> so it's, it's, it's a absolute balancing act, but we make it happen. Yeah. And so if, you know, as soon as I can find a better way to streamline it, please know I will. <laughs> but right now for what we have, it works. Yeah. So you talked, you said you, you know, you, you've been on a lot of different things, the podcast included right now, mm-hmm. and then on the radio shows and the, really the end of the year is really when the donations, mm-hmm. a lot of the donations start happening. What does the rest of 2023 look like for Mommy Love Foundation? What are some goals that you're hoping to accomplish <laughs> and sort of what are you hoping to see at the end of, at the end of December when you're, when it's getting the end of the new year and you're, and you're ready to say, Hey, here's what 2023 look like. Mm-hmm. What would you like to see Mommy Love have done this year? Okay. So I would like to see that Mommy Love has an actual storage facility space. Oh, wow. Okay. All right. So. So um, we're looking, kind of looking for the best bills, deals, but we're also looking for someone to sponsor <laughs> <laughs> a storage unit that is air controlled, right? Because mm-hmm. we have diapers and wipes and stuff and you don't want all that stuff to dry yeah. out, right? Um, so where the stuff is located currently, you know, it's not the, it's not the best area, but we either, either an office space or preferably um, a storage unit. Um, so we can, you know, get in there and organize everything that we need to organize and so on and so forth. So between that, having actual sponsors for the organization mm-hmm. that will sponsor, you know, the 10 grand or the 20 grand um, to help our to help our organization thrive so that we can keep the products that we need in stock. So we yeah. can give them out when people need them. Um, and of course, our donation drives. Right. So, of course, as we're giving things out, we need stuff to replenish. Mm-hmm. Um, so toward the end of the year, you know, another or different types of donation drives, you know, maybe looking at a fun day or something to that extent to include the kids and, you know, moms in need or moms that just know someone, just everyone, you know, just come out yeah. and just socialize and chat with each other and so on and so forth. What would you like to see a, if there was a headline that came out, say in the next three years for mommy love foundation, what would you like that headline to say? You would ask me something like that. <laughs> 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 Gotta ask the tough questions. Um, something to the extent of mommy love has helped X number of moms, um, thrive within the community, within the Hunts or Huntsville, Madison slash Tennessee Valley <laughs> community. Right. Yeah. So the, cause we, we serve the Tennessee Valley community. Um, something to that extent, because I like to see moms thrive. Right. And if, if the moms are good, I feel like the family is good. And when the family is good. You know they can they can better contribute to society. Yeah, hundred percent. So, so I mean, I mean, starting a nonprofit is 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 starting a business. I mean, you're a business owner, right? And that was that was kind of hard to get my head around, yeah. also, like, right? Because was, you always think of for profits, yeah. but nonprofits, you're like, because you're like, I'm not really gaining any money for myself. Everything yeah. goes toward, you know, back the, into the organization, right? Back into the organization. So that was kind of hard to to like actually sit down and think like, oh, I'm actually. An, I'm actually a CEO. I'm actually a founder yeah. and it actually matters. Was that something that you ever imagined you would do or was that sort of just the shift when COVID kind of happened? You're like, I think this is something that's possible. I've wanted to do something like this. And then now you're like in 2023, well, I kind of am the CEO now. Right. No, it was not something I wanted to do. <laughs> <laughs> is it something that you've, you've, you've gone to enjoy now, I guess, kind of yes. being into it? Yeah. So, so my dad, he, you know, growing up, he used to have an HVAC, excuse me, HVAC, um, company right okay. so dad was like a ceo yeah. slash you know but he also worked at drake teaching hvac right okay. so that was some of the example that i had growing up but for myself i was like uh, i'm okay i'm good i yeah. will happily go to a job work at eight to five and go back to the house and yeah. i'm fine um but as like you said covid came it kind of shifted not just mine but everybody's perspective mm-hmm. right so I was just like, well, this is probably possible. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see how this works. I was like, and it's just a nonprofit, right? Yeah, like, it can't, ah, be, that it can't, it can't be, be that much work. It can't be that much work. <laughs> lies. Yes. The lies. Probably even more work sometimes. Right. Yeah, it, it can be. Um, and, and, and depending on other people to help you, that's, that can somewhat be a challenge. But um, 
it's also a good thing because yeah. the people do show up, right? <laughs> yes. They actually show up. They actually come to to help and they're, ju- they're just donating their time. And so that to me gives me warm and fuzzy. It's like, okay, I'm not the only one who believes in my vision. 100%. You know, others believe in it too. And they see that there's a need in the community and they want to help and they want to be involved. So that's, that's, that's an, it's an awesome feeling. Yeah. I mean, I think what's, what's cool too, as you mentioned, you mentioned earlier, like having these people in your life that have kind of held your hand and got you along mm-hmm. the way, there's no, and if anyone's listening and like, and if they have their own business or they want to start their own business or they're thinking about starting a nonprofit, whatever it might be, mm-hmm. you get no, there's no golden ticket at the end of the, at the end when you launch your business that says I did it by myself. Right. Like no one's saying like it, it, it is okay. Like it is okay. And it is honestly like, please reach out to people. Like I think that's right. what people kind of get scared about sometimes is like, Oh, I want to start something, but I don't really know how well I'll figure it out all myself. It's like, no, like these other people Why really want to go through yeah. this stress. Like it's, it's already <laughs> stressful enough to start your own business. Right. It's it's even more stressful. And why would you want to add that stress to doing it by yourself? All right. I mean, there's so many people out there that have that have number one done it before you did. hundred percent. Right. And they've already gone through the downs, right? Yeah. Not just the us, but the downs. They, they have a, so many lessons learned that they're like, Hey, don't do this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, do and, it this and way. I, I think like they can direct you around like easy things that like, Hey, don't do it this way. You want to do it this way. Right. But you're still going to make mistakes and that's Absolutely. completely okay. Absolutely. But like the big, big mistakes that they made, let them like, let them yeah, let, let, guide you yes, through this. Please don't do this. <laughs> so like, if you looking at this journey with mommy love foundation, what is something, you know, now in 2023 that you wish you would have known when you launched in 2020 and 2021? Mm, probably how much work it involves <laughs> <laughs> it's not as simple as oh okay there's a mom in need let me just give you these yeah. things right no so you need statistics you need data you need to track that's what yeah. i learned written on that. there you go you need to track <laughs> who who needs help so on and so forth so you can keep all your stats and your inventory and so on and so forth up to par because if you're just out giving stuff to whomever that no, no, doesn't work yeah <laughs> and, and and unfortunately right people also like to take advantage of certain systems so on and so forth so you really have to drill down and make sure that all of your i would say systems are in place mm-hmm. right and that they're in so many words foolproof that people won't try to take advantage of yeah what you do because I'm- yeah, I mean, like, I and I, I, I feel like, you know, like you, like you said, you've had those people that have helped you, but like you, like you said, you're continuously learning new and new things mm-hmm. within the business, uh, within Mommy Love Foundation, that it's like, okay, uh, why did I do it that way? Like, I should be doing it this way. And, oh, like, I need to do that. I need to do that that way. Or that really worked or that didn't work. So let me give you an example. So I have, uh, I've had several reiterations of a survey that I have <laughs> <laughs> online now. So the first one was kind of basic, right? Like, okay, name. Um, address, yeah, 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 and then the second one, it got a little, it got a little bit more extensive, but it wasn't in Google Forms, right? So mm-hmm. it would come to my email, but I couldn't track it like I wanted to, and so I had to revamp the whole entire thing. <laughs> I just did it like a couple of months ago. We did the whole thing in Google Forms, so when the, the forms come in, I now have all the, I think I now have all the data that I need, <laughs> right? Plus, it tracks all your your stats. You know, yeah. you know the age. If they're having a boy or girl, you know, it just it tra- it tracks everything. Yeah. So for me, it has been eye opening to see um, what I don't think I need. I actually need, <laughs> um, and so now that I see that I actually need it and it's being tracked, it gives me great joy. <laughs> <laughs> how much of your like thinking through this journey so far as we're halfway through 2023, how much of your success in Mommy Love Foundation would you contribute to being in the right place at the right time and versus how much would you contribute to your hard work? So uh, let's just say <laughs> hard work is definitely part of it, right? You can't for the things that you want. You have to go for it. Yeah. That's just, that's just what it is. And I'm, you know, I'm, I consider myself a go-getter when I want to be, <laughs> um, for the things that you want, you go, you go with it. But a lot of the times I will sit down and I will pray and I will ask God, what direction do you want me to go into? Um, and at times I don't like his answer. Like for instance, <laughs> when, 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 uh, you know, I felt the prodding like, Hey, start a, start a nonprofit. I'm like, for what? Yeah. This is not even my, no, this I'm, is not my I'm, go-to. I'm, I'm good. To, I'm good with my eight I'm to five. I'm good with my eight yeah. to five. I am absolutely fine. And he's like, eh, 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 I have other things for you to do. Right. <laughs> so I'm like, fine. So, you know, if I were to give it, give advice, you know, I talk, talk to, you know, I, 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 I'm, you know, I pray 
you know, to God and ask him for different directions. And if you don't do that, that's fine. You know, ask people that are close to you. Right. And I did that too. You know, ask people that are close to you, like, Hey, what do you think about this idea? Um, because you know me pretty yeah. well, right? You know, what do you think should be the best way forward with this? And you have to also be careful, like, who you ask advice from. Because yeah. not everybody is for you. <laughs> and that sucks, right? Yeah. But for the ones that you, that you trust, you know, ask them and see and see what they think of your ideas and so on and so forth. And most of the time, if people are supportive, they'll they'll tell you, hey, let's go. Let's do it, you know. And they'll actually push you along the way. Let's yeah. say, hey, let me find ways to help you. Mm-hmm. you know move so I think it's a combination of of different things yeah. um now the percentages that's gonna be different <laughs> for everybody but for me for me you know um I'm all about you know asking for guidance and 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 gaining the help and I think that was another thing for me that I learned from I'll tra- backtrack a little bit from 2020 to 2023 it is okay to ask for help yeah like literally it is okay to ask <laughs> for help. It, you don't have to do it by yourself you don't have to stress about it um, even when I broke down and hired my coach, um, it was, it was a process for me to yeah. learn because I'm used to doing everything by myself, 100%. right? And I'm just, I'm just independent. Like and, that. and when you want to start something new like this, it's mm-hmm. like, you want to see it, you want to, you want to carry you it, you want to put it on your back and you want right. to carry it as far All, as you can as by you yourself. Can, right. And, and then you're going to ask for help when you physically can't go farther. Absolutely. It's like, why, why wait till then? <laughs> but that's too late. It's too late by yeah, then, right? Because you're stressed out, you're tired. And even the help that people are wanting to give you, you don't even want it. You don't like, I don't care. No. Right. You get to like, it. I'm going to bootstrap it myself. Right. Right. You get to a point where you're like, I don't care. It turns it, <laughs> it'll you'll, you're thinking, Hey, it'll turn out however it turns out. And it's fine because it's my mistake, but you don't have to do yeah. that. Let's not do that. I yes. Advise. Please don't do that. If you're listening, <laughs> <laughs> I advise you not to. So if, if anyone's listening and they want to connect with mommy love foundation, they want to have, they want to donate, they want to be involved. Where can they find you? Where can they connect with you? All right. So donations, you can go to www.mommylovefoundation.org. There is a donate button there. Um, the survey button will probably pop up first. It's like a little pop up, but X out of that. <laughs> Find the, do- <laughs> the donate button should be right there. Um, if you scroll up or down, hit the donate button and you can donate there. Um, to find us on social media, it is mom- it's at Mommy Love Foundation. That is for Facebook and Instagram. Perfect. Well, I mean, like, so we'll have all their information in the episode notes too, links to the social medias, the links to their website as well. Awesome. Uh, so we'll have all that there. Uh, but thank you so much uh, for joining me today. It's been fun learning more about the Mommy Love Foundation. I continue to look forward to the success you'll have in Huntsville and the Tennessee Valley for years to come. So thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate you.